So the last one, the differential equations question, but it does this thing of giving you something to differentiate first. And, and quite often when students are working through past papers, they, they dive in at part two of a question like this and get completely stuck. Because this is a real example of you can't do part two until you've done part one. And so watch out for that. Um, write down the derivative of that. Right, so we're differentiating with respect to y, y squared plus one to the power of a half. It's easy to think in powers than with the square root sign. And that is, well, it's a, it's a core three chain rule question. It's, it's big bear, something to the power of a half, the whole thing, which would be differentiated a half y squared plus one to the minus a half times by the derivative of the inside bit, which is y squared plus one, differentiate that and we get 2y. Um, well, for one mark, we've done it. It might be nice to have that looking in a little bit of a neater form. Uh, we've got a half times 2 in there, so let's get rid of that. We've got y divided by the square root of y squared plus 1. So just because I know I'm going to use this later on, I've, I've got it in a slightly nicer form. <coughs> Hopefully, we're already thinking... Why did they make us do that bit of core 3 differentiation? And then you look here and you see we've got root y squared plus 1 over y, which is the reciprocal of what we just had there. So that you can see already the link emerging in the two parts of the question. So part 2 said, given that dy by the x is this expression, and that y equals the square root of e squared minus 2e when x is e, Find a relationship between x and y. Okay, so that means we just need to find um, an equation linking x and y together. We don't have to find it in the form y equals or x equals, we just want the link between them. Right, it's a uh, differential equation where we need to separate the variables and integrate. It would look an absolute nightmare if we hadn't done part one. But remember what we said, we need to get anything involving y on the side where dy is on the top, and leave anything involving x on the other side. So we're going to multiply both sides by y and divide both sides by the square root of y squared plus 1. And that leaves us with x minus 1 over x over there, doesn't it? And that's got it tidy it up ready for us to integrate. So that's separating the variables. Everybody really happy with what we've done? Henry looked quite angry at that. Are you all right? Yeah, I've got it. So now we're going to integrate both sides. If we integrate the left-hand side, now really, it, just because we need to remember that we're doing this kind of thing, we're doing the same thing to both sides, aren't we? We're integrating both sides with respect to x. It just so happens that when we integrate this side with respect to x, the dx kind of cancels out with that dx. Do you leave it with a dy there? But we are doing the same thing to both sides. Same thing over here, integrate with respect to x, and it ends up looking like that. Did that make sense? Did you get what I meant there? Because um, otherwise, if you, don't, if you don't think you're doing the same thing to both sides, then you must be doing some kind of magic. But we, we're, not, we're not doing magic, we're, we're sticking to fairly rigid rules when we do these things. Um, right, that is great, isn't it? Because we know that when you differentiate y squared plus 1 to the half, you get y over the square root of y squared plus 1. So if you integrate that, you must get back to the square root y squared plus 1. That is part 1 done for us. That looks a little bit worrying. x minus 1 over x. And I imagine by the end of a long exam paper, this is the last question, remember, people may panic at that and think, oh no, do we have to do substitution or partial fractions? Or It could have been asked on core 1 though, couldn't it? It's just splitting up the fraction x minus 1 over x is just like x over x, take away 1 over x. It's 
just that. So when we integrate it, we've got the square root of y squared plus 1 is x minus the natural log of x. And now that we've finished integrating, we'll put in our constant of integration. And that kind of collected both constants that we can imagine maybe leading into one super constant. Right, what we got? Y is root e squared minus 2e when x is e. Unpleasant. So if x is e, y is root, what did it just say? e squared minus 2e. In other words, <laughs> okay, the square root of y squared plus 1. Well, if y is that, then y squared is e squared minus 2e plus 1 equals x, which is e, minus the natural log of e, plus c. Right. Um, yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Um, well, well, this, e squared minus 2e plus 1, that's all right. That's what you get if you square e minus 1. Natural log of e is 1. So we've got that. So here we've got the square root of e minus 1, which is e minus 1, is e minus 1 plus c. And that seemed like an awful lot of hassle to draw the conclusion c equals 0. But you had to go through it. And so we've got that the square root of y squared plus 1 is x minus the natural log of x. <laughs> there we go. And that is our answer. And uh, uh, thank you for that. Yeah, you might speak for that. Yeah, there we go. That's how they wanted it. Um, quite, quite nicely, the question did say ignore subsequent working. So if you felt the need to try and work on that until you eventually got y equals, as long as you got that line, whatever nonsense you did next, you would get all the marks for getting to that. There we go. And that's core four maths. <laughs>